So the ID clubs will have to pay 20 lakhs to AIFF for the breach of the Super Cup contract. As if they weren't dead already. Hi, I'm Ankur Sharma. You're watching Super Football, the home of Indian football fans. Welcome to Half Folly, where we hit the Indian football news as soon as it's bounced off the ground. Let's get straight into VAR, aka Very Articulate Review of the Week. The AIFF has recommended Gurpreet Singh Sandhu and Jajal Alpeklua for the 2019 Arjuna Awards. This comes after they had recommended both of them in the 2017 awards as well. That year, Bemim Devi was also a part of the nomination and she ended up winning the award. Both Gurpreet Singh Sandhu and Jajal Alpeklua have served the Indian national team for the longest time now. And if you compare it with other sports, namely cricket, any player who has ever played for the national team ends up winning the Arjuna Award. I think that same thing needs to follow suit with Indian football, especially if you want an audience that is not Indian football fans to actually pay attention to Indian football. Here's hoping it happens. If the reports are to be believed, AIFF is set to impose a 20 lakh rupee fine on all the clubs that decided to boycott the Super Cup, which is pretty much all I-League clubs apart from Chennai City FC. I think this is a bit of a harsh decision. Now listen, I understand that the AIFF is upset about the I-League clubs doing the boycott, any federation would be. But then again, AIFF had themselves given the I-League clubs a reason because uh, they had been asking for a meeting for the longest time to understand what the roadmap for the Indian football will be looking like in the future. But AIFF never really replied to them until the Super Cup qualifiers had already begun. I saw Gokulam and Mineva had already boycotted their games by this point in time. So it was impossible for the other I-League clubs to play their games when the meeting was promised. Uh, they could not have broken the coalition obviously because they had a promise to keep. So, in this whole situation, I think putting a fine on the clubs for just keeping their promise and for asking for a meeting, I think would be a little too much. Now, as you guys already know, the Under-17 FIFA Women's World Cup will be happening in India in 2020, which means we'll get an automatic qualification for Under-17 team in 2020, which means we need a team for 2020. And AFF has come up with a list of 35 probables after the end of Junior Girls Championship in Kolhapur, which is going to be led by former Under-19 national team coach Alex Ambrose. Now, as of May 2nd, the preparatory camp has already started in Goa with all these 35 probables, uh, which is great news. But then again, for the under-17 men's team, we had hired Louis Norton de Matos and obviously in the past Nicola Adam to take care of the team as head coaches. Should we hire a foreign coach for the women's team as well? Leave your thoughts in the comments down below. Mohan Bagan is finally set to appoint a Spanish coach for their next season. They've shortlisted five candidates, all Spanish. Three of them have Indian football experience, two of them don't. This new candidate is set to be announced by the end of next week, so you'll probably hear about it on the next episode of Half Volley. Now, this section of the show is called Social Keep Up, where I take the best of your comments made on SPF. So last week we asked you what you think the new technical director should be aiming at. Sabya seems to have it all figured out. Get neutralized Indian players to play for India, play more friendlies, send top teams of every contingent to gain exposure, make a team aiming for the Asian Cup or the World Cup just like Qatar did, play more tournaments with better ranked teams and take the most important steps in terms of developing infrastructure. So Sabya, I think you pretty much covered all the big talking points there are for the technical director. But one thing that I would add to it is our, our U teams, they need to have a similar style of play, all of them. So that once the, once the players graduate from these U teams and they enter the national team, they have a similar style of play that they can blend into. I've said this in the past that teams like Spain, Germany, they have a style of play that is linked with their nationality. Indian team needs to have that as well. And I hope that the technical director, along with the new coach, does that. On Kushal Das being harsh towards I-League clubs on boycotting the Super Cup, Dhananjoy Mondal says, If AIF have wanted I-League teams to play in the Super Cup, why couldn't they meet the clubs before the situation went out of hand? Then this drama wouldn't have happened. After Mireva, Gokulam and Aizol boycotted the tournament, if Mohan Bagani's Bengal Niroka Churchill had played the Super Cup, it would have been harsh on other clubs. Now, Dhananjoy, I think what you've just said makes perfect sense. Uh, in terms of the I-League clubs being ranked on the moral scale, I think they did the right things, taking to the coalition. They couldn't have gone back on a promise that they have made to the other I-League clubs. AIFF, on the other hand, went back on their promise. They said they will uh, have a meeting with Prafal Patel. Uh, they have promised a meeting to I-League clubs. That meeting never really happened. And as for promising a meeting as well, they took quite, uh, quite a long time. I as all. Uh, Minerva and Gokulam had already played their qualifiers, so it was impossible for other clubs to actually participate in the Super Cup. So how can you possibly fine Ivy clubs for your own mistake? I think it's downright unethical on AIF's part and I really hope it doesn't happen. This section of the show is called Suda Pandit, where take the Indian football posts that impressed us the most. This one is from Dharak Makwana. Entire Indian football Twitter needs to collectively apologise to Hena Singh and Ranjit Bajaj for the age fraud taunts now. 
Here is BFC telling the truth. Not just Minerva or Bengaluru. It can happen with any club. Now, Dharak, I think you're absolutely right. It can happen to any club. It has happened to Minerva in the past. It is happening to Bengaluru now. I mean, at least in the looks of it. Just in case you guys do not know what Dharak is talking about, this is the tweet that Bengaluru made, which caused quite a lot of controversy. And as you can see, this tweet features the under-15 team. But if you look at the under-15 players, they don't really look like they're under 15, do they? Age fraud is the biggest thing that plagues Indian football right now. There is no way to find out how old these players are, at least when it comes to club football. They can only look at their IDs, which can obviously be fake. They have been fake in the past. There are a lot of cases that have been hung around. They have not been made public, obviously. Media doesn't know about it, but you hear mamas here and there. I think everyone kind of knows all these cases. Uh, clubs do not have a viable option to go out and test their ages in real life. So, how exactly do we go about this? There's only one way. The EFF has to make a rule which says any player that the club signs will have to go through a Tana White House test. Their age has to be determined through a test and only then can they join a club. That's the only way to do it. Uditta Kashyap says, I think every team should use their local television channel as their broadcasting partner. This will spread the game more locally along with Star Sports. This will help Indian football reach deeper parts of the nation as Star Sports isn't available everywhere. Helpful in many ways. Now, Dutta, I think what you're saying here is something that I've been in favour of for the longest time now. I think a national league being broadcasted to local networks will really garner a lot of interest. It is being done with local leagues, obviously, Calcutta Football League, Mizoram Premier League as well. And the Northeast leagues obviously have their own television network. But you have to understand that the ISL is owned by Star Network itself. So, it's a very rare case. It never usually happens, but in India, uh, our leagues are usually owned by the television networks. So, uh, will it happen, will it not? A different issue altogether, because this will have to mean a partnership between the TV channels as well. But then, I think it's the only way to really garner a broader audience into the game. So that's it for this episode of Half Holy. I hope you enjoyed it. Till the next time, I'm Ben Sharma. You're watching Super Football, the home of any football fans. I'll see you in the next video. quite fresh because I slept all day and wasn't feeling too well. Anyway, getting done with episode 12 of Half Folly. No Women's League update in this one as well. Our motion graphics person is not here. Just couldn't do it. In the next one for sure.